Nurse! Uh. Yes! What's up, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Byron Vasquez Jr. I'm a Los Angeles-based actor, and here you will find personal stories of my journey as an actor, as well as tips and tricks and other acting-related content. In this video, I will be showing you how to take the theoretical script analysis work and apply it to a practical performance. So without further ado, let's roll the camera and action! I was on Reddit under the tab acting, searching for some ideas so I can create some new videos, and I stumbled upon this post. I'm very left-brained. I can analyze like no one's business and answer all these questions and come up with tons of objective info about my character. But when it comes to translating that into actual emotion and behavior and spontaneity, all the right brain stuff, I have a very difficult time. Well, the Reddit user posted that she had a problem taking the theoretical analysis work and actually applying it to her performance. So I'm going to give you a technique and I'm going to demonstrate it for you guys so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. First and foremost, acting means when two actors get together to do a scene on on stage or in front of a camera. That's when the magic happens. So when I'm talking about a practical performance, I'm talking about it as it relates to the rehearsal process. Every actor knows, even the ones that got basic training, the scene study questions that one is supposed to ask when you're breaking down a scene. You know the ones I'm talking about, right? Who am I? Where am I coming from? What just happened in the scene? Etc. Etc. When you start answering those questions, or start referring to the character as me or I. When you're answering the questions, don't write, My character does this. My character is coming from this. My character is coming from that. No. What you want to do is you want to start writing, I'm coming from here. I'm experiencing this. I'm doing that. You want to already start to let the information hit you and start affecting you. That's one of the most important tips I can give you when you're ready to start turning it into the final performance. Do your research. Let's say you're reading the script and there's a word or expression that you don't understand. Google it. Find out its meaning and then give it meaning to yourself. If a character is going through something specific, maybe they have cancer, Google that information or YouTube, whatever is in the scene. It's so helpful to when you're creating a character to input as much information as you can and before you know it when you're performing the scene all this information is going to come out of you subconsciously uh, there's a tip from the Sean Penn actor biography and in the biography he was telling a story about when he was doing a scene in class with another partner he set up the scene before they were about to perform and he put a box of cigarettes in the desk the audience would never know what was in there and even the actress said why are you putting the box of cigarettes in there? The, the audience will never know it's there. And Sean Penn responded, yes, but we will both know it's there. So you'll be surprised at what comes out of your performance based on just your subconscious knowing the information. So do your research, refer to yourself as I and more me. All right, now that we got the theoretical analysis stuff out of the way, let's get into the nitty gritty. The reason why you clicked on this video Here's a technique that I like to use. It is called the superlative activity. In the Meisner training, the superlative activity though is used in a structured improv. A person is inside the room when they're doing the superlative activity and another actor comes from the back pocket objective. For our purposes, we are going to use a superlative activity in order for us to start using the information that we have and start putting it together in a practical performance. The superlative activity means it takes something to the highest degree of what it is. I know it's going to get complicated. Once you've already done all of your script analysis, you've answered all the questions, what's important when you're trying to implement all that information into a final performance is your behavior. All that analysis stuff is great, but an actor doesn't go on stage to intellectualize. An actor doesn't go on stage to anal anal analyze. <laughs> the actor goes on stage to act. Act. What's important is our actions or our behavior. And that's what the superlative activity helps us do. It helps us focus and it helps us isolate the behavior that we're going to do and we're going to practice. In the superlative activity, it is not the performance. As I mentioned before, acting is when two people are doing a scene together in front of an audience, on stage, or in front of a camera. In the rehearsal process, the superlative activity is you rehearsing or practicing the behavior for the event. Which means 
you're not practicing doing the actual scene. You're practicing different iterations of how you're going to do the behavior. Think of it like this. When you were young once and you had a crush on somebody, when you went to ask them out, you didn't just go ahead and do it, right? What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? You went in front of the mirror out of the bathroom and started pretending if I asked them out, how am I going to ask them out? That's exactly what this is. This is not you asking out the person. This is you practicing how you're going to do it. What is your behavior and in which way are you going to ask out the person? So when you get to set and when you start working with the other actors, you've already experienced the different iterations of what can be. So you can just go in there and play and allow the magic to take over. But because you've already translated all the information that you did in the script analysis you put it to practice in your behavior practice and now you're going to perform it it's going to be magical it's difficult to explain without having an actual script so what i decided to do was i wrote a little little story and i answered the actor question and i filmed two different takes of me doing the superlative activity these are the questions that we're going to be using from the already finished script analysis that you did. Who am I? What just happened in the scene? How do I feel about it? What is my objective? And how will I go about getting it? I wrote a little story. I wrote it yesterday, right before I filmed. But in this story, I was an 11 year old boy when my mother died in a car accident. And because of that, my father grew distraught and turned to alcohol and drugs. On my 13th birthday, my father abandoned me. I grew up with my grandma, who then could not raise me anymore, and she put me in the foster care system. So that is who I am. What just happened in the scene? What just happened was I received a phone call from my local hospital informing me that my father was staying there, and he was being treated for liver disease, and he's asking to see me. How do I feel about it? I feel angry that my father had abandoned me all those years ago, and now he wants to see me, but I'm also hurt. I feel abandoned. And you can be as detailed as you want with your emotions. Here's where it gets really fun. What is my objective? My objective is to confront my father and to get an apology from him. Now the last one. How will I go about getting it? This is where you really, really can play. The objective can stay the same, but the behavior can change. In this scene, I did it in two different ways. Same objective with two different behaviors. The first behavior, I did it in the coldest way possible. The second take I did it, I did it in a very loving way. Your script analysis can stay the same, but it's your behavior. It's how an actor does something, his actions that really create the performance. When you have the script, the lines stay the same. But how you go about by saying the lines and how you go about achieving your objective, that can change. That is completely up to the actor. That's what they say, that the actor's only moment of control is between action and cut. Because you can play it in so many different ways, the same lines, within the same circumstances, but you can play it differently. And that's what I'm going to show you guys today. Take a quick look. Here is take number one. You don't talk. You listen to me. I am here to tell you that you left me when I was a child and I didn't need anything from you. I didn't need, I didn't need you as a father because I was able to make it by myself. I didn't need any of your help. You left me when I needed somebody the most. And I don't care if you're sitting there, lying there, dying, dying in your deathbed because I don't care. You left me when I needed somebody. Now I am going to leave you because I, I didn't need you. That's how I feel. You know what I really want? I really want to know why. Why did you leave? I was a child. I was 13 years old. I had just lost my mom and... <sighs> Dad! Oh. Doctor! Doctor! Doctor!
All right, guys, now that we see take number one, here is take number two, where I go about getting my objective, the same objective in a different way. Let's check it out. Dad. Come here. Dad. I know that you must be feeling bad about the last 20 years. And I just want you to know that I don't want to hold any anger against you. I know that it was hard after mom died. And I know that you had no other choice. But I want you to know that if you could live a little bit, we could have... We could... <laughs> We have some time. We have some time together. If you just fought, I don't know, stayed alive, <laughs> fought, don't die, please. I want to get to know the father that I lost. Please, Dad. <sighs> I forgive you for leaving. Please. Dad. Dad. Nurse! Nurse! Uh, well, it's important when you do the superlative activity, pick a verb. What are you doing? What am I doing? What is my behavior? In this scene, what, do, what is my objective and how will I do it? Once you figure that out, why, how, how am I going about by doing it, your verb, that is what you want. But again, this is not the performance. This is just practicing the behavior. And that's what I want to leave you guys with in this video, that if you start practicing the behavior, use all the information that you can, that you got from your script analysis, and isolate the behavior. And you can do it in so many different iterations because you're not doing the performance, you're doing the practice of the behavior. That is it for this video. I hope you guys learned something. Remember, I isolate the behavior, practice of behavior, and let all that information that you did in the script analysis come to fruition in the behavior so that when you go to set and you start working with the other actors, you can just let that go and start playing with them and start listening and start responding to moments and your performance is going to be out of this world. So thank you very much again for watching my channel. Remember that every Sundays I post videos about my acting journey and every Tuesdays I do movie reviews. Please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe for more of my personal stories as an actor as well as tips and tricks and other acting related content Whew. but for now that is a wrap